press release and on, on Twitter and whatnot, but overall, uh, what are the emotions you know, seeing him go uh, to a big club like Atlanta and now seeing him not here? Well, <clears throat> I could answer it very simply. He's a great coach, full stop, and he's a great person, full stop. But I will go into it a little bit deeper because <laughs> he said nice things about me. Uh, Gonzo's going to be really successful. I heard your questions about, you know, coming in mid-season and all of that stuff. He's going to get a new coach bump. He has, when you had Gonzo's playing career, and it's the same with Jimmy, I mean, they have instant street or locker room credibility. Gonzo will walk in there and, you know, he said it yesterday. It's important that we listen. Valentina's done a good job. Gonzo's going to come in here and just supplement, and he's going to have a new voice, and the players are going to respond. You always get a new coach bump when you change coaches at midseason. So I would argue, or I would say, that Gonzo is a good enough coach to bring and push Atlanta in the playoffs. Christian mentioned they have a brand new DP signing. So if you're looking at 2016 and some similarities, I mean, there you go. You guys can write a ton of stories about that. But Gonzo is a is a fantastic human being, and he's a fantastic coach. There's been rumors in the last time with DC, and, and, and now for it to, to come and for him to leave, what are the emotions, though, for you personally when you, when you kind of sit down? and? and well, it was him? tough, but look, we had, a, we had a pretty long runway. You know, I, I had an email from a staff member in there who the emotion of yesterday was pretty big, and I might feel like that as well, you know, that yesterday was a tough day when it really sinks in. But there was a long enough runway for us. We knew he was going. We knew Jimmy was going to get a job somewhere. They, they're too talented of young coaches not to be afforded an opportunity in the future. So for me, yes, a little bit of emotional day yesterday. The last handshake, the last hug before I had to get my mask on. You know, we were going we were gonna to beat Tigris and ride out on a, you know, on a, on a you know, big success story after we beat Tigres because he didn't like he doesn't like Tigres you know then he was going to get on a plane to Atlanta it would have been a great storyline but you know something happened as you said coach and a lot of people talk about what a nice guy Gonzo is but as you know once you get that head coaching job at a big club you got to have some toughness too um do you have any stories about that side of, of his sure. personality I got I got a ton so as a player because we're playing Portland this weekend. How many of you guys remember the game down in Portland where the highlight was Gonzo's face bloody, he's got the little black pebbles on his face and he's in, I think it was Chara's, I don't know, I shouldn't blame Chara, you know, I shouldn't just blanket statement there, but it was a Portland player and Gonzo was fiery and intense. And in some of our conversations, Matt, we have had tough conversations in in, in my office about certain players. I actually enjoyed those conversations. Preki has a strong opinion, Gonzo has a strong opinion, Jimmy has a strong opinion, Tommy. And that's how you get better. That's how you make better decisions. So I don't, I'm not worried that Gonzo's such a nice guy that he can't handle his, you know, couple of superstars and some of the young American guys. And he will, he will get better at it, but he's already got pretty good starting points. Locker room. Of course, you know, when two big pieces like that kind of go out. Our locker how do you, room? Yeah. How, we'll be how fine. Do you come up to them and. We'll be fine. Look, the guys love Jimmy and Gonzo. They love them. And it, and it is a loss, Nico. But we'll be fine. I mean, I have, I have fielded a lot of phone calls about people interested in a job. And so that job's going to get filled pretty quickly. We're going to have more quality people in here helping the team. You guys mentioned it. Christian, Steph, Nico, Raul, Yaimar, all of those guys are pitching in. JP, I mean, those guys have a ton of experience. So the loss is significant, but we're going to be fine. And how, how do you go about feeling that? Is there a, an immediate, like, do you, it sounds like Henry has been kind of at least temporarily promoted into the, or more heavily involved in the No, team. Henry's been same job. I mean, he's just a great guy, and he helps out because we're, you know, we're missing Gonzo now. But Henry has been helping us all year long. You guys talked about potential candidates yesterday. There's plenty of them out there. Some have jobs now, some don't. Uh, 
we will fill those positions. It'll, it'll, it, it's going to be a process. Craig and I are working through some of the names. We'll get a formal interview process in place, and then we'll let you know when something happens. Do you have any sort of broad time? Like, if you have your brothers, as, how quickly as, would it go? You know, Jimmy's leaving after this road trip. So after the road trip, I'd love to have another coach here. To your point, Henry, myself, Brecky, Tommy, we can manage, but it would be ideal if if we would get a guy in after the after the road trip. I think we have a eight days in between that and then the 29th, the game on the 29th. So that would be helpful. The same for the organization. Uh, the kind of sounders have spread out over the last 18 months. Mark Nichols, Chris Little, Chris Henderson, Jimmy, Gonzo. A lot of leadership at, at multiple layers are out there, not just in MLS, but expanding throughout the globe now with Jimmy's leaving. What's that well, say for what you guys are doing? Well, maybe I'm not such a nice guy, Dave. Maybe I scared him. <laughs> maybe I pushed everybody away. Maybe I'm a little too critical. I, I don't know. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to reflect on that. But uh, look, I think, the, I think the club has always done a good job of, okay, we understand it's pro sports, we understand that people have opportunities, and when people get opportunities to go up in a, in, a, in a different organization, that's actually not a bad thing, it's actually good on us that that we're a big club and we can send people off and fill them in with new, fresh people, fresh faces and all of that. I think that's just part of normal life. When Gonzo interviewed, uh, for these head coaching jobs. Did he approach you for advice on that, knowing that you had interviewed yeah. for oh, yeah. MLS yeah. coaching jobs? Yeah. He did most, look, he did most of the work himself, but of course he did. We had conversations when it was with DC. We had conversations when there was interest in Mexico. We had, we had conversations obviously about, look, when the Atlanta, when Atlanta came up, I mean, we just looked at each other and said, you're taking a job. If they offer you the job, you're taking a job. I mean, it's too big of a job not to do. I mean, it was such a good opportunity for him. But yeah, we, and look, he talks to Gonzo, he talks to Precky, he talks to Jimmy, he talks to Tommy. I mean, it, it's a tight group in there, the assistants. So we always had conversations about that. What are you looking for in uh, in new assistants? Like, what are what are the specific role? Are there specific roles? Are there yeah, personality sure. types? Experience? Well, they, they got to be trustworthy. They got to work hard. They got to, you know, the team comes first. All of the things that make us a great franchise. All of those things are non-negotiable. And then obviously they have to be talented coaches, different skill sets. You know, I might want a younger guy, uh, you know, to help because. Jimmy's getting a little older. I mean, it's still at times he can jump on the field and he, he did it when, you know, if a guy took a knock during 11 v 11, Jimmy would jump on. Having a younger coach isn't a bad thing in that regard. You know, getting another, you know, kind of medium guy, another guy that's good with, uh, you know, all of the data entry, the training plans, all of that. I mean, I've got a list of things that are important and it doesn't have to be one guy fits all you know, between the two new ones and, you know, me doing some more work and Preki doing a little bit more work, Tommy, uh, Jorge's, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, Jorge, our, uh, our video guy actually has a UFA license. So he's doing a little bit more work on the video side of things. So we'll manage. That's why I said we're going to be fine. Is it kind of nice having two open at the same time just because it, it gives you the opportunity to pick different skill sets rather than if there was one you'd have to it'd have to be such a yeah may, maybe maybe dave i see your question but I, ideally it's not it's not ideal at least two at a time i mean but but yes your other the counterpoint to that is yeah now you can kind of think about your staff and what works and what doesn't but look the staff i had i kept telling you guys it was the best staff in the league i still believe that um, we were very good at what we did. We had the right diversity. We had, you know, another old guy like me and Brecky. Tommy's the best goalkeeper coach in the league. Gonzo and Jimmy were taking their UEFA A license or UEFA Pro license. They had all the new ideas. And I mean, it was a really great staff. So we'll miss those two. But I'm confident that the people that, that we bring in, whether it's one now and one at the end of the year or two now, we, we, we'll have a very competent staff. You said that you've fielded a few dozen calls of people 
and emails of people interested. Are, are there a couple people that you reached out to and said, I'd like you to throw your hat in this? Uh, I know you're not going to give us names, but... Yeah, no, there's been phone calls both coming in and going out. Uh, looking at Portland, uh, obviously not, not much needs to be said about a, a rivalry match, but what have you told the team on the heels of an impressive performance against... Uh, Just not to waste great. Tigris, not to waste Tigris by thinking that it's everything's okay again. Yeah, because we had a rough patch. I mean, Ricky, we had a rough patch, and one point out of nine, it's not good. So don't think that just after one performance that that it's everything's honky dory. That's 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 going to be a tough game because you know Blanco's coming back. Does Valeri play? They played a little differently, 4-2-3-1 versus 4-4-1-1 or 4-4-2, whatever. So it makes him a little bit of a dangerous opponent, you know. So we'll see. In terms of League Cup, how, how good does it feel that Seattle is the only MLS team left? And I mean, I have my understanding is that Miguel Herrera left pretty impressed with quite a few of your players after that game. Maybe he can buy some of our players. They're a big enough club. Um, uh, what I would say there is, yes, I feel good that we are the lone MLS representative. I wa actually watched all of the games. I mean, New York a little unlucky. You know, Orlando last night, I mean, maybe could have, should have, you know, put the game away. Penalty kicks are brutal. I mean, I mean, Santos missed their first two. Uh, you know, it just that, that whole, you know, that was pretty crazy. But, yeah, I feel good that we're the last remaining MLS team and I hope we can go further in the tournament it's not gonna that that that's another good team Santos Laguna is a good team how's the uh, injury situation uh, with some of the returning players you said knew who may make the bench uh, everyone on track to yeah so he did a partial training today so you know that's baby steps he'll be in full training tomorrow because it's a match day minus one uh, then we'll see uh, Nico was out here doing extras again. Uh, who else? AB was full training. Uh, Jordan Morris was involved in the passing exercises today. What is? It? How? I mean, is that? I assume that still the timeline for Jordan is. Yeah. Very far away. Yeah, but it's a it's a lift to the club. So, to you guys' point about, you know, guys leaving, guys coming back, provide fill in some of the void so just Nico's inclusion in the team you saw the group you saw what he means to the team you heard what he said I mean Jordan's similar if we can get Jordan training again back closer to the playoffs and you know there's a sniff it just raises the level of training Steph Fry is out here working hard every day when Steph comes back into the team that's going to lift the group so those are big positives. With someone like Last Steph, is guys. it with someone like Steph is it as easy as once he's fit it's his job or is it not I mean is that not the how it works? That's not how it works, but Steph's pretty good. I mean, we will talk to Cleveland and, you know, find the best path to get Steph reincorporated within the group. But Steph in Cleveland's done great. He's done fine. I mean, he had two good performances back to back. How have you seen uh, Jordan progress through this recovery mentally and physically compared to 2018? I can't remember that far back, Jackson. <laughs> What's it like, uh, Wade Weber's question, about guys. to go on the road? Or Defiance have a, a stronger record than they have at basically any other point, and they're developing talent. What's that like for you to see that kind of winning culture at all levels? Right I love now? Wade. I love his message. I love Wade. 